You're listening to the Beer Coasters Podcast, the number one self-absorbed beer show from coast to coast and every once in a while in between. Hey, I'm Dylan Brewer at Cape Ann Brewery and you're listening to the Beer Coasters. My name is Charles Finkel, and I'm the founder and the president of the Pike Brewing Company here in Seattle. I'm uh, glad to uh, to be on the Beer Coasters. Blah, 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 beer, damn it! Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Beer Coasters Podcast, an entirely self-absorbed beer show devoted to bringing you the best and worst in mostly American craft beer from coast to coast and every once in a while in between. I'm your host this week. I'm Crazy Dave from Temecula, California, and with me is... This is Toby in Las Vegas, Nevada. And this is Mike from Boston, Massachusetts. All right. Well, welcome, guys. Welcome, listeners and viewers and all the folks out there in the interwebs. Uh, This is episode number 260, and it is the final episode of season five. So, yeah. Yep. It's we season closing finale. Out, closing out five years of of doing this stuff. Don't worry, we'll be back next week. Yeah, there's fun. no uh, hiatus. There's no summer hiatus, and we'll be back in the fall. No, no, just, no. we'll be back next week drinking more beer, I'm giving you, feeding you a whole another line of bullshit. So, except that'll be three different guys. You know, we're yeah, gonna there's start a whole new cast. Out. It's like a whole new cast of characters. <laughs> We're gonna have Doctor Tooth and uh, <laughs> nice animal. Nice. What's the dude that plays the guitar that looks like Dirty Dan's from San Diego? Uh, oh, Mike would probably know. Which one is that? No, I was, I, I'm thinking of the, the wrong guy with guy the now. the guy with like the big blonde beard and the big red nose and the glasses. Yeah. Plays guitar. Yeah. I'm thinking Zoot, but that's the uh, the saxophone player. Yeah. Uh, I can't think of his name right now. Maybe it'll Dang come it. to me. I'll just blurt it out like while we're drinking beer or something. Well, well, we speaking can't think which, about. Yeah, speaking of which, we are gonna be drinking something tonight. We are drinking a Goose Lambic beer, Cuvée Rene from Lindemans. Yeah, yeah. Goose. Goose. Oh yeah. Goose is Goza. Goza. No, Goose. not the Goza. That's different. The Goza is the beer we've done a uh, previous show. This is the Goza, which is a different kind of beer altogether. Okay. Well. Um, we got a couple of the beers that we're going to be drinking tonight, too, so uh, what, do, what do you got, Toby? What else you got? Well, uh, you and me are going to both drink the Ruse from the brewery. Cool. That means an, another freaking two Belgian beers to finish yeah, the damn we'll, season. We'll, we'll right. see how uh, <laughs> Southern California handles this interesting style of beer. Yeah. It's not very popular. Mm. So, I'm... I'm going to try the, for my tasting flight, later on in the show, um, I'm going to try the Timmermans Old Guza, and this is a limited edition. Uh, this is different uh, from their their regular Old Guza, I guess. This is a, 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 it's a, a new blend, Guza? but we'll, I'll, talk, uh, I'll talk more about it uh, in my tasting flight. All right. Cool. Well, let's uh, let's get into this beer then. This is a fermentation conversation. Oh, 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 yeah. This is a. This is fancy. There's some foil happening. We got foil. We got cap. We oh got crap! A cork. There's a cork. Damn it! There's a cork in mine too. And underneath the cap. Like who does that? Who caps? And corks. Uh, like, Lindemans, apparently. Yeah. Damn it, assholes. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, yeah, I'm, like, expecting a pop from the cap. I gotta go get a cork. But I got one right more... Back. One more... Level. So we're gonna have the, the beer jargon guy. He's, he's gonna phone in uh the the guza style he's gonna explain to us so you gotta listen to uh the full show this weekend and you'll hear the beer jargon guy's explanation of this style of beer yeah so it should be interesting it should be very uh informative and entertaining 
As always. Um, check back. I'm like Beercoasterspodcast.com, beer jargon guy, in the house. Sniffing the cork here. Sniffing the cork. Uh, Should we speak of the proper glassware? <laughs> well, I'm using a... Uh, there it's go. almost like a, a Belgian fluted, but it's very narrow. So that's that's the one I'm using. Mm. I guess I should stick my cork in my uh, my craft beer hound. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I suppose you could it? do that with corks, beer corks. I think sure that's can. legal. Put that in by a bottle cap uh, thing. I don't. I, I don't I'm think. Sure that I don't think that voids your warranty. <laughs> 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 All right. As long as they're not wine corks, I'm sure it's okay. So, we get some info on this one, or what? Well, their website's www.lindemans.ba, like boy echo. Um, It doesn't say much about it, except that. And gifeji uver on in ritual vor echte kirners. Serve it two to three degrees Celsius. I know that that's wrong. Uh, language butcher. I don't know what he said, but that was wrong. <laughs> Proof de ex mach von Kuvi Runi Grand Cru. Ginnit von den Hurinergen. Even in a different language, Dave will rattle off the marketing speak. It doesn't matter. <laughs> You're just going to rattle it off no matter what language it's in. So it pours it out. does say that it, is, it, that it is bottle conditioned and that it's beer. Um, and that it's a Guza Lambic Artisanal. And it has spontane gisting. So. Sometimes I spontaneously jizz, but. <laughs> it proves a no. bottle with age. No, no, no. It's no, re fermented no. in the bottle. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, I don't know if I want to drink spontaneous jizzing. I What'd can't wait to was? hear what the beer jargon guy says about this style of beer. Wow, it smells tart. Yeah, the color is a very golden. It Yellow looks the, kind of. the gold actually is exactly the gold of its website. So if you go to the website and look at the gold, that's like the color of the beer. Now, am I thinking of a, a different uh, a different style that they would add like a, like fruit flavored type syrups with this this style, or is that something else? Syrup. That's the uh, Berliner Weiss. Oh, okay. That they would add a, a syrup to it. I prefer syrup. But yeah, it does. It smells sour. It smells tart. Mm. Making my mouth water just smelling it. I know. <laughs> mm. Wow. Interesting. Yeah, yeah all it just kinds has of that... sour, funky, sour esters. Yeah. Almost band aidy. Oh, really? I'm not getting a little a bit. A little bit. A little bit of Band-Aid. I Just guess. a hint. A little damp, damp woodiness. Taking a sip, yeah! Oh. Oh. That's Tart Band-Aid Belgium. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. guess what? I found the English version of the uh, market speak. Super clean go. and... It's... Ooh. Right, it's sour, but it's clean because it that sour like hits you, and then uh, it turns into a like a sweet tart or a, yeah, uh, yeah, like this this sweet, sweet tarts tart. candy, and then it then it goes away. Whoosh. It cleans up pretty pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. Wow, I actually feel like this should be blended with something. Oh, but that is delicious. I would go as far as to call it delicious. Yeah. If you like sours, it's, I mean, it's kind of got that textbooky kind of sourness, you know? This is a very good, um, you know, warm weather type beer. It's super yeah. refreshing. I keep drinking it. I keep taking yeah. sips and I don't sip. want to, I mean, I've stopped for a second because, <laughs> like, I don't want to down you know, it so fast but. it sounds it sounds odd i'm not a big fan of the um probably shouldn't even me- mention this because i'm probably piss people off but i'm not a big fan of of the shandy but to me like something like this would be a perfect alternative to something like oh, that yeah. where if you totally. want if you want a a sour beer or something kind of a 
uh, you know, a citric um, sour uh, in your beer, then mm -hmm. this is kind of a, I don't know, a, a nice, nice alternative to to a shandy. Yeah, it has that. It's it's almost like a raspberry tart. But not like a super sweet raspberry juice type thing, but it just has the tartness that you would get. Yeah. From a raspberry or something yeah. like or that. Or like it's, a wild cherry, like yeah, um, you know, sour cherry. It's got that. It definitely has a fruit sourness without having any fruit this, flavor. No. Really. It, but it it I'd tastes say natural like a lemon. Though. It doesn't taste like it's it's some sort of fake sour additive you know or something like that but it's yeah, it's not like citric acid uh, you know right <laughs> or, not that that's fake all right come on i know yeah i know that citric acid <laughs> is not fake don't don't i don't need any hate letters or hate comments oh, on that uh, jeez i don't need Defensive the uh, already jeez. the uh, citrus organization to come get me hmm. you know what i do like though is at the, at the... <laughs> the national citrus foundation mm -hmm. yeah that's what i'm thinking of Sunkiss is gonna come take you down, dude. There you go. You know what I like though is that the tartness goes away pretty quick. It's not the kind of tart that keeps like ah, uh, 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 you know, it, it it cleans up, it walks away, and it's like okay, fine. I smacked you once, and I'm just gonna like just go. To me, it's interesting that you can get something like this. That's it, that's as sour as this is, and it still be thirst quenching. Yeah. You know, because mm -hmm. normally you get there. There's certain things that have that sourness, like uh, you know, some lemonades and 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 whatnot, uh, or orange juice or any of that, any kind of uh, citrus type beverage isn't usually that refreshing to me. But this has kind of a sourness, and it's still refreshing. I think it's because it cleans up so quickly in the end. Because you know, when you're drinking lemonade, you get that real sticky sugary whatever that kind of hangs out afterwards on your tongue and it's you know but with this it just washes away so quickly that you're ready for another sip and it's but it leaves just... you with a little bit of dirtiness and makes you want to drink some more yeah it's got the, it's got a real kind of mild funk you know there's nothing that's yeah too it's too like a, funky it's like a, or it's musty like a clean, about this it's a clean shaven saison and he stank yeah. I mean, yeah, there is a, a little bit of that barnyard funk in there, but it's very, very little. You mm -hmm. know, it it's just enough to remind you that you're drinking something that's Belgian or, you know, something like that, some sort of lambic type beer. It's very Food good. pairings, like guys. It. Food pairings. Uh, that's a tough one. Something that popped in my head was little uh, like fried chicken bites almost like the ones you get from Chick-fil-A with some sort of a of a spicy mustard or something like that okay but I'm thinking some sort of like fried chicken bites not like thinking, a, you know I was thinking something more like a line of, sh of, sh of like uh, uh, fish uh, yeah uh. shellfish I think might be good too mm hmm hmm I don't know. I think uh, dessert would be okay with this. Um, mm. I want. Uh, I don't know. Maybe not dessert, but I, I kind of want fruit to go with it. Like I want a fruit flavor that would complement this. Like I feel like this should have some kind of like lean towards something now whether I maybe have fresh raspberries with something like this or like a, a, a raspberry a cheesecake or something like that possibly I don't know no uh, I'm not I, sure I, how I, the, the cheesecake how that, no, that uh, uh, creaminess would play off something like this I the creaminess I would probably work Ooh, you know what might work what might work is the um, is something like clam chowder or something where it has uh, you know where it's got you know yeah. some creaminess and some fishiness and stuff um, mm. I see where you're going with the creaminess, but I don't think cheesecake is it. I think something like the Petrus, you know, uh, beers, the, those sours would probably go really good with, with cheesecake, especially the, the Petrus red. Yeah. Um, but this isn't, I just, I this isn't, this isn't that, fruit. it's not that, it's not that fruity though. So 
Um, I don't know. Yeah, that's mm. what I'm saying. Though. The beer is not fruity, but I kind of feel like it needs some kind of fruit flavor to go with it. And I'm just thinking raspberries just because I feel like, you know, with the lambics and stuff. You I might have some the... blueberries in the fridge. Yeah. I don't have raspberries, though. I have some strawberries. That's probably not the fruit you're looking for. No. Is it not the fruit you're looking for? Yes. <laughs> but yeah. Anyway, there you go. Top three locations to drink this from Untapped says it's a Max and Joe's Belgian Tavern in Omaha, Nebraska. Sierra Lakes Beer Garden, Fontana, California. The hell are they drinking this in Fontucky for? Um, <laughs> ta- <laughs> and the tap room in Ben E. Keith uh, Company in um, Dallas, Texas. Um, the rate the users give the I'm sorry the untapped users give this a 3.72 out of 7,121 ratings. Wow. Fuck! I almost if dumped my beer again. If I'm gonna go, if I'm thinking. Your... I, nope, I, I, I kind of want to pair beer. it with instead of a dessert. I do, I do want to. As far as some type of food, maybe like a chicken cordon bleu. You know, I think a Swiss. Yeah. Like chicken with Swiss and maybe the ham mm-hmm. or something like salty ham might might go pretty good with something like this. Or maybe some salmon with uh, Holland's Day sauce wrapped in uh, some sort of like uh, like pastry puff pastry kind of thing. All right. I know I've used that before on a, as a pairing. Mike, you're wrong. Yeah. No, yeah, beer food pairings are never wrong unless you're Toby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> so, Toby, you're still wrong. <laughs> oh, damn it. All right, folks. Well, like I said, you can check them out. www.lindemans.be, as in Belgium. Um, this was the Cuvée Rene. It's a goose lambic beer, or however you might say it in whatever language you might read the label on. Because there's like five different languages on this label. So they're truly an international beer. <laughs> but don't forget to listen to the rest of our show that comes out this weekend on iTunes and on our website www.beercoasterspodcast.com you can also watch this video and some other fermentation conversations on our YouTube channel on www.youtube.com slash beercoasterspodcast yeah and uh, yeah. since this is our season finale we usually do a uh, an awards ceremony where we award the number one beer for the whole year so Ooh. See who I, I don't is. even know what that's going to be yet, ladies and gentlemen. I have no idea. I, I definitely want to listen in because we're going to rattle off the beers that got five pints this week, yes. this year, that, that we that we drank and rated. So five That's another our, thing. Our the rating, rating of this particular beer will be in our last call segment as well. So, spoiler alert, this will not be rated a five. <laughs> well, All so right. we don't even bother listening to the show then. Forget it. That's it. But I mean, it could be a three, it could be a That's two, it. it could be a four, it could be a four and a half, it could be a I'm deuce, out of here. the one. So, goodbye, Mike. Well, the rest of you guys want to stick around, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll drink some more beers and talk about it and talk about the other beers we drank throughout the last uh, year or so. So, stay tuned, and we'll see you soon. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Happy finale. <laughs>